Okay. In our video series of ECG interpretation made easy, in this video we are going to talk about a very high yield ventricular rhythm called as ventricular fibrillation. Ventricular rhythms are divided into premature ventricular complexes, ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. In this video we are going to talk about ventricular fibrillation. I have already made videos on premature ventricular complexes and ventricular tachycardia. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Now, what is ventricular fibrillation? Ventricular fibrillation is a chaotic firing of multiple ectopic foci in the ventricles. Normally, in our heart, SA node produces electrical currents and those electrical currents cause contraction of the atria. These electrical currents travel through the internodal pathways to the AV node and AV node send these signals through the bundle branches to the Purkinje fiber and Purkinje fibers cause contraction of the ventricles. Now, what happens in ventricular fibrillation is that there are certain ectopic foci present in the ventricles. These ectopic foci generate electrical activity. They generate abnormal electrical activity and cause contraction of the ventricles and atria. They take over the normal pacemaker activity of SA node. They compete with the SA node and they win the fight between SA node and these ectopic foci. These ectopic foci generate so much current that literally the ventricle goes into seizures like this. The ventricles do not contract properly. The ventricles cease due to electrical activity. The ventricles are literally on fire with this much electrical activity. These multiple ectopic foci are producing electrical currents. That chaotic firing of multiple ectopic foci in the ventricles that totally disturbs the electrical activity of heart that is called as ventricular fibrillation. Now, these ectopic foci are present in the ventricles producing abnormal electrical currents and abnormal electrical activity in the heart resulting in seizures of the ventricle. The ventricles are seizing. What you see on ECG is also an abnormal rhythm. An abnormal rhythm like this which makes no sense. There is no P, Q or S, T wave because everything is gone. Everything is abnormal. Everything is haphazard. The electrical rhythm that you see on ECG is also very haphazard that is a ventricular fibrillation and as soon as the patient develops ventricular fibrillation within seconds the amount of blood pumped to the body diminishes to zero remember the heart is contracting normally in a synchronized manner and all of a sudden these ectopic foci start generating abnormal electrical activity and these ventricles start seizing like this and when the ventricles are seizing they are not contracting properly and they are not pushing out the blood from the heart therefore the cardiac output diminishes down to zero the cardiac output output is zero you will see no pulses the patient will get unconscious within seconds the patients will deteriorate therefore this is a very lethal thing if there is no intervention done if the, if the patient is not managed this is one of the most common cause of death after mi one of the most common cause of death in pre-hospital setting it is a most common cause of cardiac arrest in patients this is an ECG showing chaotic rhythm ventricular fibrillation. This is a ventricular fibrillation. This ventricular rhythm makes no sense. There are no P waves. There are no QRS complexes. This is an abnormal electrical activity because multiple foci are on fire and they are fighting with each other and there is no proper electrical activity running in the heart. This is another ECG showing ventricular fibrillation. This is another ECG of ventricular fibrillation. So these are all the forms with which ventricular fibrillation can present to you. Now previously we discussed all different types of ECGs. Even though the rhythms were disturbed, even though there were blocks, even though there were abnormal ectopic foci, but somehow the rhythms made some sense. This makes no sense. The ventricular fibrillation is so haphazard that you see a rhythm like this. Now, a classical presentation of a patient with ventricular fibrillation would be that the patient would develop chest pain, shortness of breath, palpitations, dizziness and within seconds the patient will deteriorate. Within seconds the patient will lose consciousness, there will be no pulses, the uh, pulses will be absent and the patient will be unconscious and if you do not intervene at this point, the patient will die if you do not manage the patient. The only management of ventricular fibrillation is defibrillation. What you do is that you start the CPR, you defibrillate the patient. That's the only treatment. We'll talk about the treatment in a while.
Now the causes of ventricular fibrillation, coronary artery disease, most common cause, previous MI, previous MI, myocardial infarction, tissue, the damaged heart tissue has the ability to generate abnormal rhythms. These are the ectopic foci, these are the center of ectopic foci and even within first 24 hours after MI, ventricular fibrillation is the most common cause of death because these ectopic foci generate abnormal electrical activity and they can lead to death of the patient. Therefore, we give beta blockers after an MI to prevent these type of ventricular fibrillation, electrolyte imbalances, hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, electrophysiologic disorders, wolf parkinson white syndrome, long QT interval, the most common cause is a heart damage. If the patient is having my, a previous MI, if the patient is having myocarditis, if the patient is having congestive heart failure, these heart failure patients have a damaged heart, their heart has different changes in them, their heart is either hypertrophied, there are abnormalities present in the heart and whenever there is any change from the normal tissue, there is a change in the electrical activity and there is a risk that that patient will develop ventricular fibrillation. Now coming to the normal characteristics of ventricular fibrillation, the heart rate is not measurable because there is no pulse. The, the ventricles are seizing, there is, the regularity is irregular, the P waves are not there, the peak to QRS ratio cannot be measured, the PR interval are not there, the QRS complexes are not measurable, that is an irregular abnormal rhythm. Now let's look at some ECGs. If you look at this ECG, this is an ECG of ventricular fibrillation. Heart rate unable to determine. Regularity irregular. P waves none. PR intervals none. QRS complex unable to determine. And interpretation is coarse ventricular fibrillation. Now if you label this as a ventricular fibrillation, it's totally fine. And if you put coarse ventricular fibrillation, that's even better. Now, I'll, there are two types of ventricular fibrillation. There can be a coarse ventricular fibrillation that has a prominent waves like these. And there can be a fine ventricular fibrillation when, which is more like a straight line, but there are small squiggles and uh, uh, bumps over in it that is called as a, a fine ventricular fibrillation. I'll show you the ECG now. Now, if you look at this ECG, this is another ECG of coarse ventricular fibrillation, heart rate unable to determine, irregular. P waves none, PR intervals cannot be determined, unable to determine the QRS complexes, coarse ventricular fibrillation. Now this is an ECG showing fine ventricular fibrillation which is more like a straight line. Remember not to confuse it with asystole. Asystole does not have a squiggles or bumps like these. Asystole is more like a flat line, it's almost a flat line. This is basically a ventricular fibrillation. This can be easily confused with asystole, but these, these abnormal squiggles and bumps, these show that there is ventricular activity and this is a ventricular fibrillation. If you mark this as asystole, that will be marked wrong. Now, heart rate unable to determine, regularity irregular, P waves none, PR interval none, QRS complex is unable to determine, when, uh, the interpretation is fine ventricular fibrillation. Now, in the previous, all the ECG videos that we discussed, the rhythms that we discussed, we always had something to say in these things. But in ventricular fibrillation, everything is abnormal. Now, coming to the management, whenever the patient develops ventricular fibrillation, either the monitor starts showing such waves or the patient becomes unconscious and you directly do put leads and you do ECG and you see these abnormal rhythms, you start the ACLS protocol. Do not think over it. Start the ACL, ACLS protocol, start CPR, start giving chest compressions till the time the uh, staff brings you the defibrillator and you follow the ACLS protocols like this. Now, in ACLS protocol, you start CPR, you give oxygen, you attach the monitor and defibrillator and you see whether there is ventricular fibrillation or not. If there is ventricular fibrillation or pulseless ventricular tachycardia, and I have talked about pulseless ventricular tachycardia in detail in my video on ventricular tachycardia. If there is ventricular fibrillation or pulseless ventricular tachycardia, we fib, we tack, you shock the patient. Remember, we fib, we tack, you shock. If there is V-fib or pulseless V-tac, you give the shock to the patient. After giving shock to the patient, you again restart the CPR and then you again reassess the patient. You again reassess whether the rhythm is shockable or not. And then if the rhythm is shockable, you again give shock to the patient. Now, which rhythm is a shockable rhythm and which rhythm is a non-shockable rhythm? If there is V-fib or V-tac, that is shockable. 
if there is asystole or pulseless electrical activity that is a non shockable rhythm in non shockable rhythm you cannot do anything else other than giving epinephrine to the patient now i have talked about all these uh, cardiac arrest protocols in detail in my video on cardiac arrest management you can check out the link given in the description below now if you if you uh, started cpr you give the shocks to the patient you again check assess the rhythm and if again the uh, if the ecg is showing ventricular fibrillation you again shock the patient then you continue the cpr you don't uh, bring any breaks in between you shock you do cpr you shock you do cpr and this time you give epinephrine 1 mg every 3 to 5 minutes and then you reassess the rhythm that whether the rhythm is shockable or not if the rhythm is shockable if it shows we fib we tap you again start the cpr you start chest compressions you give a mydarone or lidocaine to abort this rhythm and you treat the reversible causes if at any point if at any point the rhythm becomes non shockable you have to shift to the other side of the graph in that case you cannot give shocks to the patient if the patient is having asystole or pulseless electrical activity you cannot shock the patient in such case you can only give epinephrine to the patient and you continue doing cpr if in any case that asystole or uh, pulseless electrical activity gets converted to vfib you shock the patient or if the patient develops a vfib and gets converted to asystole you do cpr and you give epinephrine and remember asystole has very poor prognosis many patients uh, majority of the patients die if they develop asystole asystole basically is no electrical activity in the heart now i'll post the whole chart of acls on my facebook page the link will be given in the top comment now in the acls chart the dosages are as follows when you give epinephrine you give 1 mg every 3 to 5 minutes and uh, after giving epinephrine the next step would be to again reassess the rhythm and then you look go for amidrone or lidocaine amidrone iv first dose 300 mg bolus second dose 150 mg or if amidrone is not available lidocaine can be used to abort the rhythm first dose 1 to 1.5 mg per kg second 0.5 to 0.75 mg per kg if the patient does not improve treatment of reversible causes involves 5 h's and 5 t's hypovolemia hypoxia hydrogenine means acidosis hypokalemia or hyperkalemia hypothermia correct the h and the t's tension pneumothorax look for cardiac tamponade toxins pulmonary thrombosis coronary thrombosis the t's these are the reversible causes that can cause ventricular fibrillation and they must be looked for when you are doing the acls protocol before going into the summary if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my videos on ventricular tachycardia polymorphic ventricular tachycardia premature ventricular contractions the link of those videos are given in the description below we talked about what is ventricular fibrillation how does it appear on ecg within seconds patient becomes pulseless this is how it appears the causes of ventricular fibrillation the characteristics of ventricular fibrillation the presentation of ventricular fibrillation the acls chart that you have to follow when you see ventricular fibrillation on monitor the drug therapy in acls protocol the reversible causes if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on ecg interpretation made easy the link of those videos is given in the description below thank you very much